You know, you first of all have disbelief, and then it goes into anger. And then you, you say to yourself, why is this happening to us? It's difficult. The only way I deal with it is I don't, I don't think about it. I just try to think of other things. And we try to do it day by day. He first asked if, if she had smoked. And when, she, and, when he, and, and when he found out that she hadn't, the second thing that came out of him was uh, radon. And that's just about all he said. And you've been with a woman for 38 years. This is tough. And then all of a sudden find out that she has something that could take take her away from you, it makes it it makes it difficult. The sad thing is when we really can't come up with a good prognosis. The patients usually be the second or third visit to the office. And they'll generally take me aside. They don't want to ask this question in front of the family, They're trying to protect the family. And they'll say, Doc, tell me the truth. How much longer do you really think I have? How much longer do you really, really think I have? Really think I have? My daughter Melissa knows what cancer is and she knows that people can die from cancer and every day she would ask me if I was going to die and if I died who, who was going to take care of her and her sister. My children, I had to take care of my children no matter what. I was like, their needs still have to be met. Whether I'm on my last leg or not, you know, they're, they still need to be fed, they still need to be bathed, they still need to be nurtured. Life doesn't stop just because I'm sick. I see a lot of cancer patients. I've been doing this now for 25, 28 years. The worst cancer that comes in my office is the lung cancer. Because lung cancer patients generally do not do well. Lung cancer is not being able to breathe, being on oxygen 24-7, as high as it'll go, just so you can breathe. Um, it feels like someone's sitting on your chest and you can't get them off. It feels like you're slowly strangling. That's one operation I, you know, that was a shocker waking up with tubes down your throat and you can't breathe and you're gagging and uh, I wouldn't wish that on nobody, you know. And you're like wondering, you know, I just felt like I was going to die right there with a I was going to choke to death. And, uh... I've never smoked in my life, uh, ever. I thought I had a cold, and he says, well, let's get an x-ray and, you know, make sure it's not pneumonia. And uh, when he got it back, it was this huge, like a blimp on the screen. And uh, I immediately thought of radon, first of all, to have my health tested. And once I had it tested, the results were high. I believe radon caused my lung cancer. I was not a smoker. My husband was not a smoker. My house tested at 50 for radon gas, and my neighbor's house tested at 70 for radon gas to a very high level. He died December of 2002, shortly before I was diagnosed. The very first moment 
that I learned the tumor in my left lower lobe was cancerous was I was still in recovery after surgery. I was not able to open my eyes or move and the doctor just placed his arm on my shoulder and said it was cancer. You can't explain what that feels like to hear those words. After the doctor told me that it was cancer, my first thought was towards my husband and what we're going to have to be going through in the next upcoming months and years. And I was questioning how I got lung cancer. Never have smoked, not secondhand smoke, no family history of it, um, not asbestos. Tested our home, thankfully my dad um, remembers hearing about radon from like the 60s and 70s, did a little bit of investigating, um, purchased kits for us, tested our home, came in at 8.6 uh, measurement, and from there met Tom. And he came in and uh, we mitigated our home, brought it down less than one. And since then I've gone through chemotherapy. Like I've mentioned today, it's my new hairstyle. <laughs> and it's coming in and I'm noticing more gray. That I don't know. Like. <laughs> <laughs> my husband, we hadn't, I don't know if he didn't want to know part of it and we just hadn't talked with him. So when we went to the lung doctor, um, he took one look at the CAT scan and said there was a mass there and it was cancerous. My husband asked him, how do you know? And he says that he was 90 to 95 percent sure. And my husband then did get angry. You know, you first of all have disbelief and then it goes into anger. I would rather have her around than myself. Uh, she's such a good person. I knew that it was in the liver and I knew that it was in the lungs and some of the lymph nodes. And then I found out it's also in the bone in three different places. So then you were kind of feeling like, well, to tell the truth, when she told us it was like eight to ten months, my oldest daughter Excuse me. My oldest daughter just said that at least I'd be here for Christmas. Of course, the first question all of them ask is, do you smoke? And we said no. And right away then he said, what about radon? We were busy. We couldn't find the kits, and we just never bothered to go and get them. And I know my husband's been upset now at times, he said. You know, if we'd have just gone and bought a kit and put it downstairs, maybe we would have known. These victims of radon-induced lung cancer summon the courage to share their stories with you, to share this intimate part of their private lives. Their suffering could easily have been prevented. Now is your chance to make a different decision, a preventative decision. Something as simple as a radon test can keep your life whole and avoid the pain, the fear, and the uncertainty that cancer inflicts. Because they chose to speak out, now you have the chance to do something they didn't. Test your home. You've heard their testimonials. Now heed their warning. Trust in their words. Trust in the words of the radon professional who is working every day to save lives. Trust in yourself to make the right decision and test. Now. It's so easy to do. The radon professional, friend, or family member that gave you this video cared enough to pass this message on to you. Now is your chance to make a different decision, a preventative decision. So visit CANSAR.org, that's CANSAR.org, or call 1-866-77-AARST ARST, for more information. Then, remember the words of our radon-induced lung cancer victims. In this quiet moment, promise to get your home tested in the next seven days, because 30,000 deaths from radon, it's just a drop in the bucket. unless it's you.
or one of your loved ones. And then it's no longer just a drop in the bucket. It's your whole bucket.